Hey guys, in a previous video, I showed you what I normally have prepped in my fridge. And this is a recipe that you can make that's super easy with two things that we already talked about. One is organic butternut squash, which is awesome. You cut it, you prep it, you have it in the fridge. It stays good for a few days. I love this stuff. It's super durable. It's really nutritious. And then chicken broth. This is actually a chicken broth that I had frozen in my freezer, which is amazing because it just, you know, you don't have to worry about using it right away, which I always love. Whenever I have amazing organic food that I've prepped in my fridge and I don't use it, I get so bummed out. So I love whenever I can make something that I can then freeze so it's ready to go to whenever I need a quick meal. So here we go. Okay, prepped organic butternut squash. This is just a really easy way that I roast it. Um, you can, we're, I'm gonna show you how to make it into a soup, but you can also just, you know, roast it like this and then have this be part of your meal, which is great too. This is an olive oil that I love. I've used so many different olive oils over the year and I love ones to cook with that are super mild. Now we're just gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper. This is so easy. I love having this stuff prepped in my fridge because come home from a long day at work or just a long day of being out, whether you're a mom or not, or you're just busy. It's just like so nice to have stuff that's easy to get on the table quickly. Okay, great. So there we go. Now we're just gonna throw it in an oven at 350 and let it cook for like 20 minutes. We'll give it a toss, another 20 minutes and it's done. It's so easy. So next part is the frozen chicken broth. So it's pretty stuck in here. So what I do is I put it in another bowl and then I fill it up with hot water. I don't want the water to go above the lid because then sometimes if the lid kind of pops up a little bit, you don't want the water then seeping into your awesome broth. Um, so you just kind of want to fill it up right to that lid line. So just hot water. So now we're just gonna let this soak until the outer layer starts to melt and then we're gonna pop it right into this pot. Super easy. Chicken broth has been sitting in here for a few minutes. So as you can see, the outer layer is melted. That's exactly what we want. So now we can easily get this into here and get it all melted down. Again, I made this chicken broth last week, so this is great. This has been sitting in my freezer, and now we're gonna use it to make this butternut squash soup. Okay. So now we're just gonna pop this on the stove on low and let this all melt down. So when I'm melting down my chicken broth, I usually cover it so all the heat stays in there. Um, and also you don't want it to, you know, evaporate. You want to keep all that stuff in there. <laughs> we worked, you know, hard on this. Not too hard. So the butternut squash has been roasting for about 20 minutes. So now what we want to do is we want to give it a little stir because you don't want it all cooking on one side. So you want to kind of, you want it to be cooking evenly. So we got to give it a little toss. So however you want to protect your hands. Normally sometimes I'll just like pull the rack out a little bit and do it in the oven, but I wanna show you guys how I do it, so I'm gonna put it up on top of the counter. Hopefully these protect my hands, we'll see. I burn myself all the time. I have like little burns all over my hand, because for some reason I feel like I don't feel heat, but my friends always make fun of me for that, it's very funny. Okay, great. These worked, fantastic. So now you just wanna give them a little toss, because if you see, you know, this, it's because it was resting on that side, you don't want just that one side to be like, you know, brown. So you want to give it a nice toss so it cooks evenly. Even though we're making this into a soup, if you were to just roast it and have it as part of your meal, you want to give it a toss. Whoops, a little bogey. Oh, there's another one. Okay, great. So now we're gonna put this back in the oven and we're gonna set a timer for another 20 minutes. All right. A little shake, shake, shake.
So the timer for 20 minutes went off. We're gonna pull the butternut squash out of the oven. Protect your fingies. Cool. So one way that you can easily test to make sure the butternut squash is done is if a fork easily pokes through. So when it easily pokes through, you know it's done. Okay, great. This is awesome. Also, another really versatile vegetable. Okay, cool. So this is so easy. I'm going to make this into a soup. Um, a lot of people think that soups are really hard to make and that if there's like this crazy gourmet thing, it's so not. So check this out. We just baked the squash, super easy. This is a blender that I really like. This is just my little um, Breville blender. It's really easy. I make a lot of things in here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, you know, let this cool. I mean, I've just been doing this for a while, so I'll just go right to it. But let it cool, obviously. You don't wanna burn yourself, so be careful. So what I'll do is butternut squash in the blender. I don't know why I'm just like not that sensitive to heat on my hands. I'm not sure why, but be careful. <laughs> you know, pull it out of the oven, wait for it to cool. Okay, cool. So, so remember our frozen chicken broth. Beautifully melted now. So now what we're going to do is just take a little bit of chicken broth. Just pour it right over the squash. So when I make my chicken broth, I don't put that much salt and pepper in it because I cook a lot of my daughter's food with it. Um, and depending on what my, um, what like sometimes my husband is on a particular diet for a role he's preparing for or whatever, I tend to, because I do so much cooking with my broths, I put very limited salt and pepper in it. So afterwards, just make sure with whatever you're cooking, remember to add some salt and pepper to it. A little bit more to the max line on there. Okay, good. You don't want to fill this too much because I've done things before where it's like exploded <laughs> out of here if it's too full. So when it says max line, actually pay attention to that because I've made that mistake thinking like, I can put more in there. No, that is on there for a specific reason. Okay, let's give this a blend. I use this blender all the time, I love it. Sometimes when you use these blenders, if stuff is hot in there, you have to be careful when you open it because when it's hot, sometimes it kind of sprays out a little bit. Um, so a lot of times what I'll do is, if I'm blending something that's hot, I'll just wrap something around here just to protect in case it pops out a little bit. But this was, oh, it didn't do it, so that's okay. So then this. Also, depending on the consistency you want, if you don't want it as thick, you just add, you know, a little bit more broth. Let's just taste it before, because again, you want to double check the salt and pepper. That is so good. Okay, don't make it weird, but that's like really good. Okay. So then that is the butternut squash soup. Normally what I'll do is I will make this and I'll pair it with some kind of sandwich or a salad, depending on who I'm cooking for in my family or if I'm cooking for friends. Depending on what the rest of the meal is, this is, this is a great component to the meal. And then what I'll do is the rest of this, because this is all prepped, I'll always store it. You could put this in the freezer. This butternut squash soup freezes really, really well. So this is ready to go. You just pop it in your freezer. You could put it in the fridge, heat it up in the morning, bring it to work with you with a sandwich and salad, just like you prepare a meal at home. Awesome. I do this all the time. It's a really easy recipe and a great go-to. And it also stores really well, so it's great to prep ahead of time. So I hope that you guys like this recipe and subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you can see when I put up a new video. Thanks guys.